going on guys Manny here welcome back to the channel welcome back to the gray city I'm back in town uh, the big Siorana trip is over and I thought I'd make a little bit of a trip analysis video I thought this could be interesting for you maybe you're planning an upcoming trip as well or something like that so I would um, like to give you some of my input regarding strategy rest days you know climbing days um, conditions and stuff like that you know how to get your projects done during a trip and how I did it during this trip show you some stats show you some additional exercises I did and all that kind of jazz also we have a premiere today because we have a little bit of an overhead camera going on here which is gonna be a nice experiment so you should see what I'm f fiddling around with my papers and stuff here I've got my bigger paper here for my notes uh, so that I don't forget anything as we uh, as usual basically and I also have here an excerpt of my training diary which we're gonna use for this analysis um, if you want to have more detailed information about my training diary I already made a video quite a while ago about that topic you can check it out here somewhere um, anyway without further ado let's get into the uh, let's get into the stats of this trip I would say so I had 44 days in total in Siorana, which is which consists of 33 climbing days and 11 rest days, which means that I had pretty much exactly a 3 to 1 uh, pattern, which means 3 climbing days, 1 day off, 1 day rest day, and then 3 climbing days again on average. It's important to point that out, we're gonna talk about that later. The major successes were three 8B pluses and three 8Bs, which were, um, I wanna point that out, uh, the three 8B pluses especially were on my list, so I wanted to get them done. Three super classics of Siorana, uh, which I felt strong enough for this trip, and I wanted to get them done, so I'm quite happy actually that they went down. When we compare this to the previous winter trip of the previous year, which occurred in Leonidio, as some of you guys remembered, because I made videos already back then, in Leonidio I was 68 days in total, so that's about one third more, one third longer than in Siorana this trip. And of these 68 days, I had 46 climbing days and 22 rest days, which makes this, the whole thing to a 2.1 to 1 pattern. So. For every 2.1 climbing days, I had one rest day on average. Um, the major successes of this trip back then were three 8B pluses as well and six 8Bs, so quite a couple of 8Bs more. Um, however, I have to say, I think they are a little bit softer than the Siorana routes, a little bit softer grading in general, I had the feeling. And also I was there simply longer, you know, I, want, I was there one third longer and I got like one third more routes done. So that's kind of a logical thing, you know, to happen that you get more stuff done when you're for a longer time in a certain area. But um, anyway, let's go a little bit into more detail here after, after these general stats. I wanted to show you a little bit of kind of a pattern and here is the point where hopefully the overhead camera comes into play. Um, because you know when I say 3 to 1 pattern that that's of course on average you know I didn't go 3 to 1 all the way in fact I did quite um, the other thing on average as we can see here here we have for example five days on one rest day I hope you can see that five days on one rest day one day on one rest day then four nine days in a row on I think this was the, the, the longest period where I just kept climbing of the whole trip, you know. Then one day off, one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off. Oh, actually there is no one day on here. <laughs> These are three days in a row off, you know. And the reason for that, of course, is that this was the period of the first winter attack, so to say, okay? There was snow, it was super cold, it was just not possible to climb. So it doesn't make sense to, you know, push very hard there. Better get a good period of rest in, adapt to the rock, you know, regenerate your body and stuff, especially after such a long time on, you know, that can be quite a good thing to do. And then uh, we've got three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off, six days on one day off and three days on and then the trip was finished so in the second half of the trip i got more into a i would say regular pattern than before 
uh, with the three days on one day off thing but before that i was kind of um you know giving it all i had i wanted to and especially in the beginning you know i wanted to get my hands on my projects you know on the musts of the trip on the 8p pluses which is something that i did differently this trip from all the other trips that i did so far actually and i wanted to talk a little bit about that because there are basically two strategies that you can do here you can uh, spend just one two weeks you know on just, on just random routes uh, easier routes doing some on siting uh, getting a lot of moves in to adapt to the rock, you know, adapt to the area and after that attack the projects. Um, this is, I think, something that is kind of smart to do because it's gonna prevent injuries, it's gonna uh, give you some time to also generate the skin, you know, the, the skin that this rock needs, you know, to properly climb on it. And um, this time I didn't do that really. I just got onto my project instantly. For example, you can see here we've got on this day, checking out Migrania Profunda, you know, which was one of the big AP pluses that I want to do on the basically second day in Siorana. So, uh, yeah, that was quite, quite directly attacking, so to say, more or less. Um, yeah, but the reason why I did that is that I already had a glimpse of what my projects were, you know, because I already climbed Migrania, which is basically the same start as Migrania Profunda. So I already knew quite some of the moves. I knew how hard it's gonna probably be and this kind of lowers the great respect you know that you have from your projects which of course is always there a little bit but you know when you already did the start of a certain route and you already you only need to do the other exit which is a little bit harder then there is a little less great respect from this thing you know than from a completely fresh AP plus for example and the same thing is true for Mr. Jackie which I tried uh, also already one trip before in my last Ciorana trip for like two days or something you know it was still quite hard for me back then too hard actually but I already knew oh okay when I'm a little bit stronger next time then I can try it and that's how it worked out basically so yeah that lowers the great respect and I wanted to get on my projects instantly to get them done quite quickly actually so that I can get my hands also onto something harder which unfortunately didn't happen <laughs> but you know that's sometimes how it goes Additionally to these main projects, especially in the first weeks, I also got my hands onto some side projects. What are side projects? These are things that are a little bit easier than your main projects, but in the same sector. So that when you go to the sector to try your project and you have the feeling, ah, today is not such a good day, I'm feeling quite heavy, the conditions are quite shit. Um, you have something to do, you have a plan B, you know, you can go to your side project and try this one and eventually get it done because it's a little bit easier than your main project. So this is a strategy that I would recommend anyone to do. If you have a main project in a certain sector, just take a look around and look for a side project as well. Maybe one or two grades easier, you know, sometimes something that you can project when you're just not that fit. And it turns out that in my case, these side projects were also really, really hard. <laughs> I can remember in, in the Lola sector where the Migrania Profunda is, I had this On Papa 8B, which is super technical, vertical, old school uh, route, super hard for 8B, at least in my opinion. Um, I think it's harder than Cali Barocca, for example, but that's another subject. Uh, it was quite hard and it was super beautiful. So I actually wanted to get it done. So. All of a sudden this side project became some sort of main project actually you know and i just completely ignored migrania profunda because i wanted to get this thing done same thing happened in the can piggy boogie sector where mr jackie is where i did where i got my hands onto the side project la balade des pendus another quite tough 8b i think which also at the same time was very beautiful and i wanted to get it done and it became the main project for quite some time and it turns out that I have wrong betas for everything, you know. <laughs> you know when, I'm, when I'm checking these things out, I'm always kind of pioneering, you know. I don't know, I don't have anyone who, who can tell me the, 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 the correct beta and stuff. So I just get my hands onto it and try to get to find the best way up there. But sometimes that's just not the, the easiest way, you know. And it happens to be on this, these routes as well trying the wrong beta for a very long time and once I get the right beta, the right beta it's still falling on the last move you know on these side projects so it took me quite some time actually to get these side projects done I think this this occurred after like three weeks or even four weeks after we arrived 
So then the side projects were done and switching on to the main projects. Same thing there, you know, fighting, struggling with conditions, um, having the wrong beta, falling on last moves, really, on all the main projects. Mr. Jackie, Kale Walker, and also Migrania Profunda. And Migrania Profunda had the worst heartbreaker ever, actually, that I had in my whole climbing career so far. So, as you can see, um, for example, here was the Migrania Profunda send, and here I had the heartbreaker. So. This could have been done three days earlier already, and I wouldn't have to spend one whole whoa, one whole more day on this project because, as you have to know, when you're trying such a long route and such a resty route as well, then you have two, maybe three goes a day, and then you're totally destroyed, and especially your skin, because when you're hanging in a roof like this, you know, with these with all these good holes and you kind of been climbing and shaking for 20 minutes. Do you know how much skin that costs, okay? So it really burns after two goes and making a third go already requires quite a lot of pain tolerance, but after that you're you're shredded, okay? So you actually it would be best, best to make a rest day then after this probably to regenerate some skin actually. But yeah, anyway, got this one done uh, three days later than it had to be. In the meantime, falling on the last move of Mr. Jackie here once. So this was actually done on the last, on the very last day. I had a very good day there and the conditions were very good. So I actually should have climbed it there and I would have saved so much stress, you know, prolonging this onto the last day, this struggle. But I got it done and that's why I'm happy. I already actually calculated uh, with the fact that I probably wouldn't be able to climb it again, okay? Because I wouldn't get these perfect conditions again and I wouldn't get such a good body conditioning again as I had on this day as well. But I got it done, so I'm quite happy about it. All in all, I can say everything was done quite a lot uh, later than I would like to have it, you know? Everything could have been done a lot quicker and this is the reason why I couldn't um, get my hands onto something harder which was one goal of this trip actually as well so uh, all in all I can say I'm very happy that all of the musts are climbed and all of the musts are done but mm, could have been a little bit better I could have also got my hands onto something harder uh, but yeah it was it was a harsh trip I had a lot of uh, I wasn't very lucky let's put it that way <laughs> There was a lot of struggle with conditions, it was very cold and also quite wet for Siurana. I was in Siurana already two times for about a month or something and I never had seen snow. This time it snowed for like three times or something, and so it was just super cold and super wet. The conditions were not really good and it was a, overall a very cold and wet winter in general as far as what I have perceived all around Europe, you know. I think there was some point where in Austria it had minus 20 degrees or something. And this is super cold, I mean, wow, that's really cold. Anyway, and also the execution was not on point this time. I fell on the last moves too often, I just didn't have the right beta. Now I, you know, I have more experience now when it comes to 8B plus and 8B, so the more experience you have, you know, the more um, you can find the right beta of a climb because you get a better feeling for what is too hard, you know, no, that's too hard, that's not 8B, uh, there's gotta be something easier and then you keep looking for a longer time and then you eventually find the new beta instead of um, just, you know, focusing on this too hard beta and in your head you have the, the feeling that you can do it anyway like that, it doesn't really matter if it's too hard or not. Um, but then you always keep falling there, you know, it's something different when you get there from the ground So it becomes only a B if you have the right beta and climb the, from the ground very efficiently, so And experience is gonna help you a lot with that finding the right beta for a climb, but anyway, that's actually another story um, Okay, so that's how the projects went basically Let's take a look at the general list here. What do we have as well? About additional exercise, that's another topic. I think I got one question. Um, is gymnastics very com compatible with climbing? And I would say yes, man, yes. I think it was one video, the video about YouTube, where I also put in some pre-roll footage of me making some exercises on the parallels. Because I actually did that quite a lot of times. And just to um, give you a little bit of an... Of, uh, 
of a feeling what I did during this trip. This is my portable hangboard, the, the finger shinder. And on this one I did some max hangs and some one arm negatives, always on the days before the rest days. And here I have my parallettes, these ones I had with me as well. And I did a parallette session again on the days before the rest days. Now, why did I do that? First of all, it's not a lot of effort to bring these things when you get there by car, you know, you just simply throw them into your, into your car. You can mount this on any tree basically and hang on it. And you can put this on the floor quite easily and train on them as well. So that's not a big hassle. That's why I love these things so much. But anyway, I did it before a rest day because of course I wanted to be super fresh after the rest day again for actual climbing. And I also did it after the climbing, you know. I went climbing on a day, then did all these sessions and the next day would be a rest day. The reason why I put so much emphasis on this during this trip is that I have made the personal experience when you get back from an outdoor trip and especially an outdoor rope climbing trip you're gonna feel super weak in the gym bouldering. And I hate that because you really have to, it feels like you have to get two weeks of training in again, you know, until you're somewhat close to the level that you had before you, you made the trip. And I figured this could have something to do with, uh, first of all, a uh, lock of power, um, upper body strength, basically lock of power and finger max strength. I think that it's actually these two things that you lose the most when you're on a, on a prolonged rope climbing trip. So how could I tackle that perfectly? I wanted to take these guys with me for the pushing power, wanted to take this guy with me for the finger max strength and the pulling power, you know, the one up, the one arm pull up power. And I got weaker a little bit. I already know it because yesterday I had my first session in the gym again, and but not a lot. I have to say I, I felt quite strong on the bouldering wall. And this is something that's very unusual for me after a big trip. Usually I feel super weak. And I have the feeling also on the pull-up bar, I can do my one armor and stuff like that. So um, I didn't lose a lot there this time. Just because I made every time before a rest day, I used these tools to train a little bit, you know. So as you've seen, you've seen I didn't do a lot of rest days. Maybe I used these things one to two times a week. And that's already enough to not lose all of your strength, you know, that's actually quite enough to hold your level, obviously. And yeah, quite happy about that, that this worked out so well. All right, so now that we got onto this thing, this actually leads me to another very interesting topic. Got another comment um, on, my, on one of my videos asking, I think it was on one of the uncut ascents, Hey Manny, so we do all these training in the gym and stuff. Is it actually useful for outdoor climbing to train all this, all this gym training? And I can tell you something. Um, it is useful to some extent, but not uh, as much as you might think. When I am preparing for a trip in the bouldering gym, you know, as you as you all you guys know it in on the 45er and doing some bouldering and stuff and doing nothing else than this. Going there, then I have at least three weeks of acclimatization. I would say after three weeks, I have really the feeling, wow, now the power comes, you know? So you've got this transition period of where you basically trade your gym power into actual outdoor power. And once all this trade is done, you're super strong outdoors and super weak in the gym. So you kind of trade your power to something else, into another region of the sport. And it's really like that. It feels like these are two different sports, you know? Um, you gotta have this acclimatization period. I think that you can make it shorter by training power endurance before you start your trip. So when you start like two weeks before the trip starts with training power endurance, then you also, then you already have somewhat some adaptation to rock climbing, you know, because especially on rope, on rock, rock, rock climbing outdoors, it's a lot of power endurance in fact. So when you can get your power endurance sessions in, like four power endurance sessions, for example, two per week in front of you, you starting a trip, you can kind of shorten the acclimatization period by a week or two maybe. But for me personally, and I have the feeling that this is getting even more extreme, the more you get up the grade, the, the grade ladder, um, you gotta have this acclimatization period. And this is something that is very, 
I think that's very important for people who do not have so much time, okay? So if you don't have the time to go on a two-month trip, for example, where you can spend just the first three weeks to get acclimatized, you know, to do a couple of moves and stuff, where you only have maybe these three weeks for your whole climbing trip, then it's quite important to actually get acclimatized before the trip actually starts. You know what I'm saying? So I feel kind of, this is the thing where we talked about, about privilege in my The Great Everyone Can Reach stuff. This is one factor where the privileged people who have a lot of time um, are in an advantage, in, a, in, in an advantage, in an advantageous situation compared to the uh, 40 hours a week workers, you know, who just don't have so much holidays. Um, acclimatization is really a key if you want to climb your best outdoors. You gotta be acclimatized and this takes time. I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is, at least for me. And it takes for me about three, this trip I think it took about three weeks, okay? Three weeks to almost a month actually until I had the feeling, wow, now I'm back in the flow. The clipping and everything is so easy, I can shake out on the rests again. Uh, I don't get pumped so quickly. All these things, you know, it's just acclimatization a lot, actually. Also, I had a comment. Um, I should do a little bit of a commentary to my uncut sense, especially on Migrania Profunda and Mr. Checky. And I actually want to do that. I want to do a commentary about resting uh, on Migrania Profunda because I think this is such a, such a good rule to explain some of the resting mechanisms that um, are actually quite important, like you know, how to breathe and stuff like that. And I also want to get into Mr. Checky a little bit maybe because it's such a weird route, you know, such a unflowy, bouldery, big move, strange move route. Uh, could be a bit beneficial to get into the single moves with a little bit more detail there. Um, I think that's actually it of this trip review. I would say, um, yeah, I think it was quite an awesome trip. The conditions were far from ideal. The execution of mine, I lacked quite a bit of execution in this trip. I could have done a lot of stuff a lot quicker, but all in all, I got everything done that I wanted. And now also, and a, a very attentive viewer uh, pointed out that this trip was, I did my 10th AP plus, my 10th five, 14a I think it is in American grading and that's actually true that was my 10th AP plus so I have the feeling now that um, I'm getting quite experienced with this grade you know and it's also if you experienced if you're getting more experienced in a certain grade the great respect of the next grade drops because you can then imagine to go a little bit harder than this you know so now I feel kind of confident to um, try 8c again what's what's gonna What's the future gonna bring? Um, I think it's gonna be quite cold and wet here in Austria for a couple of more time. So actually now that I got my, uh, my, my other part of the climbing instructor done, I'm thinking about um, going on to a little bit of a trip one more time to make use of this acclim acclimatization that I got now to rope climbing again and maybe get some hard stuff done. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure to where and how long and stuff like that. So that's gonna be stuff of the future. Now I'm gonna stay here for a little bit, make some videos, you know, I wanna get some cool um, and useful videos done again. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little trip review here. I hope I could give you some input maybe for your own trips. And um, yeah, see you guys in the next one, bye.